So today we'll be discussing of how to go about planning a solo backpacking trip around India. And when I'm talking about a solo backpacking trip around India, I mean a trip which doesn't include enrolling with a travel agency or a travel group or going along with friends or family. It's purely about traveling solo, that is independent travel around India. So the first thing you have to break it down into three parts. One is that is the pre-planning that happens before you go on a trip. That is your conception of the idea. Like the minute you decide you want to go solo, you got to start planning for this entire journey. And this particular thing cannot be done overnight. It takes a couple of weeks minimum, depending on the number of days that you're going to travel. It's like I would refer it in retrospect. It's similar to planning for an exam. You got to study for months in advance, hours are put into it, and when you actually end up giving the exam, it's not more than three to four hours that you end up just writing the paper or going through the whole process of giving the viva, however your exam is. So in a similar way. Planning for a solo backpacking trip is exactly the same way. It's just that it is a battle between your mind, body, and your soul because it's three parts. Again, so pre-planning involves a lot of decision making, and decision making I would recommend when you're deciding. Don't ask your friends. Don't look up the internet of where you should go first. Just listen to your intuition in your heart and your soul, and you'll get your answer. Decide on the budget once you've decided on the place that you want to go to. So, for example, if your heart tells you to go to Himachal, then you decide on how you're going to save up and make the budget to go on and do this particular journey to Himachal solo. If your heart is saying go to a close by location, close to your hometown, say for example, Hampi or a Gokarna or a Rishikesh, which is a weekend gig from the city of Delhi or from Bangalore or from Mumbai. Then you budget after it, but don't plan your solo backpacking trip keeping the budget in mind because that's not going to be a fun adventure. That's going to be a, a stressful adventure because you're always going to be thinking about the budget. So once you've decided the the destination that you want to go to, start reading blogs. Don't go to watch videos because videos can't really help you pen down things. Because if videos could help you pen down things then everybody would have been just traveling without blogs and videos would have been the source of getting information but it's not it's a it's a way of getting visual insight into the journey but it's not really going to help you plan and make your trip happen so start reading blogs start understanding the terrain the temperature the weather the kind of people the language spoken the best time to go there start dotting all that down so for example if you're planning to go to the himalayas that is himachal uttarakhand in the monsoon it's a bad time the best time to go solo backpacking over there i would personally recommend is the start of winter that would be october november or summer that is april may because these are two times which are favorable to go there since it is good weather to be traveling you don't want to be stuck in himachal or in uttarakhand when it is flooding or it is extremely cold and snowing and you're stuck in one place and battling for life that's going to make your solo experience a nightmare so avoid the nightmare second thing when you're pre-planning is after you've decided a location that's when you first the next thing you start doing is getting your gear in place because when you're traveling solo you need to be carrying everything yourself it starts off with the backpack with the correct shoes the correct clothing you can't wear jeans and travel if you can but if if it starts to rain if it if the weather goes bad your jeans are going to take forever to dry up so I would personally recommend wearing joggers or track pants or the best is cargo pants because they have multiple pockets and are easy to travel with. Getting the correct jacket which is vital. You can't travel to the Himalayas wearing a jacket which works in the city. It it will suffice for only for your bus ride but once you get there it's going to be a disaster. So that's number two that is getting and accumulating your, your gadget, your gear. The third part, what I would personally say is getting your gadgets in place. See, when you're traveling on a solo trip, you need to have, before you have a good phone and a camera, you need to have a power bank because your power bank is your lifesaver. All your gadgets are secondary if you don't have a power bank because by default, your power bank will be as important to you as your backpack because you're going to run out of data and you're going to run out of charge on your phone. So to avoid all of this hassle, it's carry a good power bank. I would recommend a minimum of 10,000 mAh which is needed that will get you through the day considering that most of the smartphones today have a good battery backup and should be able to last you at least 50% of the day so you just need to charge along the way. Another important gadget that I recommend to everybody traveling is a spike board which is which can charge multiple gadgets because when you're staying in a hostel or in, in any kind of accommodation they will have 3-4 plug points but today 
most people end up having more than three four gadgets and then charging all of it becomes a, a headache so to avoid the headache carry a spike board or a power board which can charge multiple gadgets so this is all that you need to get ready before you start your journey the most vital thing that you need to carry is a towel now you might think that every place you're going to stay at will give you a towel that i agree they will give you a towel but if they don't give you a towel you're going to be in a soup so it is always better carry your towel it carry us a thin light towel which is easy to dry i would personally recommend not buying one from decathlon because everybody is traveling with those decathlon towels and then it becomes a real headache when you keep them to dry knowing which one is yours so avoid those just carry a regular towel which you get in the local markets now once you have accumulated your gear you've got all your tech gadgets together you've decided a destination the fourth step is very important is how do you go about planning the trip how do you decide whether you should be going in winter summer monsoon which is the best time i would say personally for a solo traveler for the first time embarking on a solo trip don't go in the monsoon it's not a fun time to do a backpacking trip go in the summer or the start of winter both these both these seasons are better and are more inclined to make you love solo backpacking as opposed to making it a nightmare again So once you've decided the season you're going to go in, start dotting down what is possible and what is not possible. And see, when you're doing your first solo backpacking trip, don't expect to do everything that you would do on a group trip, because things will go wrong. It's not possible for you to have a hundred percent flawless trip when you're going solo. Things will go wrong in terms of you might budget a taxi, a private taxi, to go to a particular destination. Maybe on the internet, it's saying three thousand, but when you go there, it will end up being five thousand, and it might, it might hurt your budget. So keep the all of those kind of things in mind, and keep a relaxed, flexible trip, which is more about self discovery as opposed to discovering the sights over there. It has to be a combination of both. It's like driving a car; man and machine need to blend in. So in a similar way, backpacking solo for the first time is it's, it's you as a human body. soul mind and spirit going against uh, not going against going along with nature to experience and experience the culture the the heritage whatever nature has to offer and w- when you decide to blend in with both and do whatever is possible that's when the entire experience becomes fruitful if you're trying to go and see everything that's possible you're not going to enjoy the whole thing because you're just going to be running from one place to another place skipping and jumping in and out of transport The best way that I would recommend is take the public route to dot out your entire journey. Taking the buses or the trains is the best way to go around because that's the best way to get local information. It's the also the best way to get to know how the locals travel, and it's the best way to start conversation with locals who can give you hacks of how to get around the place in a much more easier way. Like there was this one time I was traveling solo to Tripura, and I wanted to go to uh, wanted to go to this poti. and everybody said that you have to take a taxi and a private vehicle to go there but once i started traveling locally by the trains in tripura i came to know that you could actually get there with a combination of the local train and by taking a shared rickshaw which wasn't put up on the internet so th- stuff like this is only possible when you actually take public transport the next thing is deciding your stays so now everybody will tell you that when you're going on a solo trip it's better to stay in luxury resorts and to stay in hostels and all of that but personally i will tell you the best way to go about a solo backpacking trip is to find a good homestay because when you go to a homestay it's like staying with your cousin's family or staying with a relative because those people are really going to take care of you much more and be more more caring to you than a what a hostel or a resort will care about you keep this in mind that traveling on a, on your first solo backpacking trip isn't really complicated it's only about getting the planning correct if you get the planning correct everything is seamless so by planning correctly in your pre planning it makes your entire process of being on the journey is very very smooth you can book your stays online you can find homestays all over and the best suggestion that i would give somebody who's planning a homestay would be or any stay for that matter if you get the correct vibe when you're talking to the person on when you get their number before you book and you vibe well you know that's the stay don't go based on the money or the stist or the location go on the vibe because the vibe matters more than the location or the price that you are paying i wouldn't recommend airbnb stays because not all of them have the owner staying over there it's mostly a caretaker who's taking care of them 
so avoid airbnbs but go for homestays which are run by the locals who are staying there who can be your guide and your 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 uh, go to contact to move around in that particular region now when it comes to the final part which is planning your final blueprint which you'll be running for your particular first solo backpacking trip make sure that you're not cross wiring it when i'm saying cross wiring you're not going back and forth and forming a star it should be in a sequence which is more like a circle or a ring as opposed to just going up and down and going back and forth and wasting your time traveling here and there rather than just going in a smooth sequence so to get that correct don't go and copy anything from the internet because those are trips which are run in a in a fast pace thing which is when you have more than one person when you're traveling solo the best way to go about it is go to google earth and pen down all these places first on google map and then check it on google earth so you'll understand the terrain and whether it's possible to do all that you're looking for in that sequence if it is not alter it and always i would suggest for your first backpacking trip plan for minimum 8 days leave on a friday or a saturday and come back the next saturday or sunday why 8 days so you get two weekends you got to take just five days leave if there's a public holiday make it four days leave and in this whole process what it really does is it makes your entire journey very easy because club with the weekends and the days in between you have eight days to explore a particular region don't go to do a state just go and do a small part of it if you're planning goa just do south goa or north goa if you're planning himachal just to one valley don't go to do the entire state it's not possible in that particular time frame and even if you end up doing a major chunk of the state it will cost you a bomb so you'll curb your spending by just spending too much and the last thing that is the food when you're traveling solo make sure that you stick to veg food as much as possible because veg food doesn't upset your stomach non veg is perfectly fine but provided that you eat it from a place that you can take a that you can take it f- for the fact that their food is their meat is fresh because if you're going to eat in a place which will give you a stomach upset remember there's nobody to take care of you so you'll have to bear with all that happens to you personally when i travel solo i always prefer eating veg because that's the best way to go the only time i eat non veg is when i know i'm staying at a place for more than one day so that even if my stomach goes bad i don't have to run around searching for a for a washroom when i'm in a bus or a train or traveling around from place 1 to place b So this is how I would go about suggesting planning your first solo backpacking trip. Follow these steps, make a note, keep a book or make notes on a doc file online so that everything is seamless. It's all about planning and being organized. If you are a good planner but not organized, it's going to be a mess. If you're organized but you are lazy to do the planning, it's going to be even harder. So you need to really level up your game and do it yourself. It's like a self It's like a solo project that you got to do because ultimately the fruits of what you bear on the road is something that you will cherish for the rest of your life and there's nobody more or anybody that you can thank for your first solo trip other than yourself because you've taken the courage to go along the journey and to make this thing happen so to do all of that follow these steps and just make sure that you don't take any hasty decisions while planning and go by your gut gut instinct